WNYwatercooler.com. Hey, when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the pussy. You can do anything. Grab them by the pussy. Grab them by the pussy. Grab them by the pussy. Pussy, 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 pussy. Well, Rosie O'Donnell's disgusting. I mean, both inside and out. You take a look at her, she's a slob. She talks like a, a, like a truck driver. Rosie attacked me personally because I was very happy when her talk show failed. The other thing that failed, and this was a real monster, and everybody was suing her, was her magazine. Her magazine called Rosie was a total disaster. So I loved it. I gloat over it. I think it's wonderful because I like to see bad people fail. Rosie failed. I'm happy about it. She's basically a disaster. Welcome back. Welcome back. WNYWaterCooler.com. Uh, we got a uh, whiny guy in a wind tunnel, uh, Costanza Coast, as you may know him on the line. Jam, man. What's happening? Oh, can you get out of the wind tunnel? Uh, let's see. Bill's uh, your, your squad. Great day to be a Bill's fan. Love the, love the hire. We got a 42-year-old. No nonsense coach and hot off the presses. We got a experienced D coordinator and, and what's not to love? I don't know. <laughs> Did you true the, true or false? You you found out he's forty two from my blog post. False. Uh, all right, that's fine. <laughs> I, uh, I I lift him up, man. He you know, I didn't know anything about the guy. He's Pretty much was a no name to me. I don't know if you have knew much about him before we interviewed him, but the guy's got he's had a solid defense in Carolina. He's got a good reputation amongst his players and seems like he's you know, it's, it seems like a pretty solid hire. He was interviewed for a few places, so you know, what what more can you really ask for from this organization? Well, how do you not know who he was? I knew he was the Eagles D C and he fa- he flunked out of there and then he was a hot candidate, but he got screwed by the Super Bowl last year. But I no, I agree with you. I mean, what else could we expect? The whole the whole fucking national narrative was, oh no, no, the Bills aren't going to be tough to hire anyone. They're not going to be able to hire anyone. And they got seemingly, which these bullshit coaching searches, I don't understand them. How the, there's what there's ten names for six jobs. No one else could possibly be thought of as a head coach. I, I don't understand it. Yeah, it's weird. It's like, it, this is the problem I have. It's like Leslie Frazier, he failed. Got a no quarterback. These coaches, it's just, they, they're all the same to me. There's, there are. And unless you have a quarterback who can win games for you consistently, you're going to be three and out. And then it's like once you fail as a head coach, you have a tough time getting another job. Although somehow... Somehow Doug Marone and Mike Malarkey are both head coaches in the National Football League right now. That's that's weird, but uh, everyone gets yeah, everyone gets recycled. And if you have a quarterback that's pretty good, then you basically have a job for life unless you lose. Even like Marvin Lewis, he doesn't. He'll never get he fired. And these coaches all have the exact same tone. They say the exact same bullshit. They if you could just write write down their comments, put them on a page, don't attribute them. You could never differentiate one thing that they say, other than maybe like a black guy has a little slang or a white guy says like "sir" more or something. Like, yeah, I, I totally agree, man. They're all they're all the same to me. You know, it didn't really matter as much to me about who we're going to hire as our coach, as much as it matters to me what their plan is at quarterback that's all that matters i don't care we had, tomorrow 2 p.m i want sean mcdermott to say this is what we're doing at quarterback and have a plan because it doesn't seem like the people that were employed by this organization before him had a clue and i still don't know if whaley or i don't know what their plan is i just want a guy who has a plan for the only position really that matters in the organization yeah i mean all he has to do is say Oh yeah, I'm not gonna punt on fourth and one in the opponent's territory, or I'm gonna think outside the box and not say a bunch of blustery fake bullshit like Rex did. I mean, what I'm interested in who the offensive coordinator is, obviously, like everyone else, the quarterback, and who's like who's gonna be controlling the 53 man roster in the draft. Yeah, exactly. And I just I want them to have a plan. I want them to look like a business that knows what it's doing and. You know, have a have a role. Have 
this is our coach. He's in charge of this. I'm in charge of this. And I want everyone to be on the same page. And I want everyone to have be all in it in it together as far as like what the plan is because this organization was like, was in complete shambles two weeks ago. It was just embarrassing. And I was more know, embarrassed for the, no, the local news media and the whole and the national media too. <laughs> Who, do you really give a fuck that they had Anthony Lynn saying, oh, well, I didn't pick Tyrod. They, they told him that we had to start him. Well, yeah. Isn't it obvious? Yeah. I didn't care at all about the Lynn press conference. I did think, you know, I didn't care. Okay. I didn't care at all what Lynn said. But he shouldn't have been up there, man. Come on. I mean, this guy's been, he's a running backs coach three months ago. And have him, you fire your head coach. And then you have your... Uh, basically, interim offensive coordinator fielding questions about why his boss just got fired. It just, it just makes Doug Whaley, and it's just it's not a good look to me. It's just embarrassing. Well, it doesn't. Yeah, I mean, it, Pagula, he doesn't know what the hell he's doing, and Whaley, he's scared of the media. I mean, rightfully so. It, what, what what kind of question is? What is your job? What do you do here? That who is that? Gleason? That guy's a yeah. fucking joke. That, jo- I thought, that question I, as big of a joke as Lynn being up there answering questions. Why they didn't fire Rex on Monday? Oh, it was New Year's Day. Who gives a shit? They knew that Tyrod wasn't going to play the last week. That, to me, I agree with. T- Rex should have been fired Monday and instead of Tuesday or, or Sunday night, whatever the hell the time frame was. Yeah, but, it, but really, I mean, I agree with you. I thought the media during that press conference was, like, pretty brutal. And But when you're asking a guy... Like they ask about Rex getting fired. Oh, I wasn't. I wasn't aware of the decision. Like, what is that? That's just such a joke response. Like, well, yeah. I mean, it was a straight up lie. It was a straight lie because he still he can't hurt Rex Ryan's feelings or like make it known what their internal discussions are. It, it's embarrassing, but you know that it's a bald faced lie. He obviously told Pagula many times, "I don't like him, fire him, or whatever," or "I think he should be fired." It's obvious, but. To put, lie up there, and then uh, oh, Jerry Sullivan is so offended that he lied to him. Doug Whaley lied to him. Oh my god! Yeah, I, I don't. I wouldn't be. You shouldn't be surprised that he lied. But I don't understand why it was so hard to just say it was an organizational decision to fire him when we did, and that would be that's it. Yeah, that's all he would have had to say. I mean, if you say, <laughs> "Oh, Terry," what did Terry say to him? Well, ask Terry. But it was an organ. All you had to have was one fucking talking point. Organizational decision. Organizational decision. And then yeah. eventually they'll just move on. He could have said that to every question. Instead, he's like, "Oh, I, yeah, I wasn't aware. I wasn't in those talks, and like, I wasn't privy to it." Yeah, it's just, because it, it makes the whole organiz- the whole organization just look pathetic to me. So I, they deserve everything they got. I thought, but you know, I don't know. But the, the Bills media, they were uh, the Buffalo media was they're wolves at the door. <laughs> But, I mean, regardless, irrespective of that, now, I mean, basically, now with the hiring McDermott, I don't think we said his name yet, Sean McDermott, I think that kind of, all that pretty much goes out the window unless he has a disastrous press conference Friday, but I don't see that happening. Well, I mean, you never know. But. Yeah, you. there's nothing to be, you can't complain about this hire. He seems like a well-respected guy. He's a young guy. There's no reason not to give him the benefit of the doubt that maybe he will think outside the box. Maybe he will. You know, all these coaches say now, like, oh, we're going to pay attention to, like, statistics and what, analytics. I'm still waiting for the first guy to actually, like, like actually make decisions based on that. And maybe he's the type of guy that will. I mean, that's all I want is someone who th- thinks differently and that is, has, a, has a plan and is confident in it. Just, that's all I want to hear. I want to be reassured that we have a direction. Yeah, I mean that's that's not gonna happen. He's gonna he's gonna be the same as every other head coach, just like the other six head coaches that we fired. I mean, we've been through this so many times. We know the drill. We're not gonna get excited for this guy. But I mean, any I haven't heard really anyone that's mad or pissed or disappointed. It's basically what we expected. But yeah, this robust analytics department that Russ Brandon's been fucking lately in the last couple of years. I'm, I've I've loved it. Yeah, right. That's what I'm talking about. It's like all just. It's all just talk. And I just want I want it to actually happen. I mean, it's it's. Well, I I want that, but I'm I've lowered my expectations, just like most other things in life. I've lowered expectations. I, all I'm expecting is eleven men on the field and the two biggest plays of the entire game, and when our season's on the line, 
uh, and maybe know when to call a timeout or know when to challenge something or be able to get the defensive play calls in with 30 seconds left on the play clock. I mean, that's, that's all I want at this point. Yeah, exactly. I want the team to look ready. I don't want... I don't want our safeties in corners, like, looking at each other with their arms in the air, like, not knowing what they're doing, having guys, like, sprinting on and off the field at the last second. Like, I want our offense, when they're losing in the second half, to have a little sense of urgency and not snap the ball with 10 seconds left. I want this to look – I want this team, for the first time in – 20 years to look like it belongs in the National Football League. I don't want to be in the fourth quarter in the opener down 13-7 in a must win with the milk in the clock like we have all day. Like I just, I've just i seen enough. It's the same thing year in and year out. I just I want this team to just be a real team. Is it that much to ask? Yeah, how how tough is it to like ha- have a two-minute drill, an actual two-minute drill, or so, like to just not huddle and just be ready for the next play and know, know what you're doing or think you know what you're doing or it looks like you might think you know what you're doing instead of just like you're, you're just staring at the clouds, looking around like every fucking big play. Yeah, it's, and it's been the same way. It's like, it doesn't even matter who the coach or quarterback. It was like this with Kyle Orton. I'm glad Lynn's like gone. With Manuel. It was like this with Taylor. You know, Bailey, Marone. It doesn't even matter who the coach is. It just seems like, for whatever reason, this this team just it doesn't seem like it belongs in the league. <laughs> Despite, I mean, we still win seven, eight, nine games the last three years, but it, it just seems like it's not that much harder to luck into a season like the Dolphins had this year. It just isn't that hard. But I feel like these coaches come here, and there's just a pervasive stink. I mean, you can't cut all 53 players and start over. I mean, like uh, Watkins, he's been here three seasons, and he says, oh, I've been, I'm already used to losing. I don't like that. Uh, like, what? How is it, it just, it's something very per- pervasive throughout the locker room, throughout the whole organization, the city. Everything just, it sinks into them so fast. We don't even have a losing record with Sammy Watkins on the roster. I think we're 500. 9-7, and 8-8, seven, 7-9. Eight eight, seven yeah. yeah but, you're right. <laughs> but we, I don't know, but I mean, that's how it feels. I mean, how can we, I thought this year, we go 8-8 eight eight last year. I thought this year was, I was, you know, obviously I was so high on the team before the season. It was just. I had no idea just, why. I don't know why it was, but it was like it, Weird. it's like every year, no matter how much talent we have or how good I th- that I think we should be, it's just we're just going to revert back to the same eight and eight, nine seven and nine team that we are every single year. Well, <laughs> who's our quarterback? You're completely done with Tyrod. You don't want him back. <laughs> no, I mean he's we can't. Doug Whaley screwed us, and we twice. If we could have. If we could be like, okay, Taylor, here's, you know, give him some contract that makes sense right now. Like, why do we have to have, be in the position where we have to sign this extension or whatever, and then he's on the hook for 30, whatever it is, 30 million in five years or whatever the contract. Like, why are we in this position? It's so, it seems to me that it was so avoidable and there was no need to do this before the season. Taylor was at camp. It's not like he was holding out for a contract. I didn't, like, you know, I mean, it's easier now to say that, but although I didn't, I, I might go back and check. I didn't love the extension, but I didn't hate it, but I didn't completely understand it either. Like, why do we have to give him more money? And the, to, in the beginning, why did we give him, a, it was what, the, the original contract he had was three mil, three years, six mil, and the third year could void. So why didn't we just give him a little bit more and give him full three years, two years ago? Right, we could have done, there just seems like what we did was, I just don't know, man. It just seemed, it was a terrible contract. I don't remember what I said when it happened either. It's also very possible that when he signed it, I didn't really totally understand like the implications after the season, but I don't know. I just feel like, based on what we've seen the past two seasons, there's no way we can we can bring it back for that kind of money. I just don't think we can do it. I mean, we can, but I just, I don't think you're, I think you could find someone else in the draft or even some veteran bomb quarterback. I don't really know who at the moment, but someone who can perform comp- comparably to him in for way less. And then you can have 
flexibility in other areas of the roster. And, you know, I mean, that's what I would do. And then I would draft four quarterbacks. Or I'd be on the, I'd be on the horn with every team in the league asking what it would take. You, No quarterback in this league is out of my league. I'm calling Green Bay. I'm calling every team. Scott told four, me? Four firsts, five firsts. It doesn't matter. First round picks are so overrated. It's ridiculous. I'm trading... I'd still trade five for Andrew Luck. Like these these NFL teams are obsessed with first round draft picks. Like I'd be I'd be looking to get a guy that's already good. Why not? Well, m- most of the, because you don't know what the you lost. You can't just trade a quarterback. It, if you have a big signing bonus, the whole signing bonus goes against your cap for that year. They can't. You can't just trade players. It doesn't work like care. that. We have forty million in cap room. I don't care if twenty five of it's tied up to get a good quarterback. It's the just team that has points. the quarterback on their roster. It's the I'm te- just saying, Steve. All I'm saying is everything should be on the table. Everything should well, be on the yeah, table. Yeah, but I'm not. I don't want to trade for someone like AJ McCarron or uh, no. Matt Barkley. No, that's. That, I mean, yeah. I mean, that's. I don't know. If you can get someone. Who, who's better out of them? And like, who is Taylor worse than those guys, or better than those guys? I don't know. <laughs> he looked pretty good to me this year. He had terrible games and terrible plays. He looked lost sometimes, but we did change offensive coordinators in the, during the season. We did have our two. We had Watkins out for nine weeks. We had Woods out for what three? Yeah. No, I I'm not disagreeing with that, but he. I think he just is. He's probably going to be the same guy next year. Is that who we really want? Is a guy that's going to throw for three thousand yards and uh, you know less than twenty TDs or twenty TDs, and we're going to lead the league in punts, and we're going to you know never you know just be very inefficient on offense, and we're going to dominate bad teams, suck against good teams. I don't want to see that anymore. I want to go into Oakland or go into these you know play these good offenses that we need to score on in the second half and be able to throw 25-yard passes over the middle on the money to our two first-round pick receiver. I don't want to be feeling like if we drop down by 10 points in the second half that you just put a fork in them. I just I don't want that to be how how we settle. I just I just don't. And well, Taylor, that's his ceiling. I think his ceiling is a little bit higher if everything goes right. So it's not that high. Maybe renegotiate it. I mean, I I doubt it, but I don't know. Well, how many quarter open quarterback spots are there going to be for him next year where he's going to get offered 16, 17 mil? Do you think he really – going to the Jets would be any better than here or going to the Bears? Like, he doesn't have a lot of options to be a starting quarterback and get no. paid starting quarterback money next year. Yeah, I mean, our situation compared to those situations is probably better, but – he might just be like, if he can get the same money to go somewhere else, or he he might just tell us to f off if we ask him to renegotiate. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, knows. I probably would if I was him at first, but who who knows? I mean, yeah, what's he going to get I offered? Mean, you never know. At the, at the same time, you know, he's he might want to tell us to f off, but at the same time, the only reason why, like, the Bills are the reason why he's even in this position to begin with. Like, we made, we made him a starter. Who knows if he would have even started on any, a different team. So, he, like, while he may want to tell us to F off, he also owes them a little bit of uh, something for that, I think. But, I don't know, we'll see. If he was willing to renegotiate, I definitely would consider bringing it back. But we still need to bring in... I'd still draft multiple quarterbacks. I don't know why teams just don't draft... I would draft so many quarterbacks every year and have an open competition and just cut the guys that suck and just keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it until I get one that's really great. Because you're an idiot. That's the dumbest no. thing I've ever heard. They don't, they're not going to get enough reps. They're not going to get enough reps, and you're not going to have depth anywhere on your roster. Oh, my God. I disagree, man. So many of these draft picks are garbage. I don't care about that. I don't need Jonathan Meeks as my backup safety. I'll just sign a bum free agent. They can do the same exact thing. Eighty-five percent of the players on our on our roster after they get drafted, or maybe higher, I think all of them made the roster the, the that immediate year, the last two years. Right, but you if you want to use third, fourth round, what for what? How many? 
second, how many third, fourth, fifth round picks are um, actually like significant contributors? Most. <laughs> Most. Look like, at our third round picks. Backups. Look at our third round picks the last two years. Third Starting pick guard. This year is Adolphus Washington. You know, you mean to tell me we can't go find a free agent, Adolphus Washington? Known, like sign him for the veteran minimum might be a little more expensive, but a little bit more. That's the whole thing. You get him for three years at the rookie minimum. That's yeah. No, I get that. I get that. But still, it's worth it to me. To I don't know, man. I'm just saying we don't even try. We'd, We'd have to completely change to the way that I, obviously our GM doesn't know what he's doing with the cap because our cap our cap situation is horrible. Some of the contracts he gives out to these players, but and the way they're structured, Jim Monos, what is this guy's like qualifications? I I I I'd like to be an intern. I I'm I'm gonna go up there tomorrow. Yeah, you should, man. You seem you're all you're all you're on top of the cap more than most people I know. But I don't know jack about the cap. I don't really care. I just want a guy under center who who can throw the football. Is that that much to ask? Seemingly, I trade. I would trade two firsts for Phil Rivers. Why not? He's thirty six. I don't care. He's giving you three. If he gives you three good years, if we had Phil Rivers for three good years, we're going to the playoffs at least twice, guaranteed. Oh that wow! That to me is worth it. Uh, maybe a, maybe a second and a third. I don't know. But... Two firsts, I give. I, it's it, these first round picks. I, I named earlier our last seven first round picks. One of them we traded away. Other ones were Spiller, Darius, who's supposed to be we're paying Darius $100 million to not play half the games. Watkins, who has been injured more than he's played. Gilmore, who's going to be off the team. Like, what are we losing? If we didn't have any of those guys and traded all those picks for a stud quarterback, well, are you in better position now, or you know, what's, what, what's better? Well, the, I, the, if we trade, I would agree that you could trade a first round pick and what I mean the way that Whaley runs these drafts where he's giving up picks for seemingly nothing I mean you need the exact opposite GM you need someone that does the exact opposite of what he does because yeah, most of yeah. what he does doesn't make a lot of sense to me you don't trade you don't trade first round picks for receivers I mean come on you learn that in like freaking middle school you, you don't trade two fourths first round picks for receivers yeah you don't trade two fourths for a backup linebacker Madden franchises Knows you don't trade a first round pick for a wide receiver. Are you? I mean, are you crazy? Like we actually did that. God. All right. You got any other <laughs> Sean McDermott hot takes or, or other opinions? We gotta wrap this up. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I'm interested to see who we uh, who we have as our old core. It looks like McCoy's out. Uh, apparently Norv isn't going to be, I, I, like, I really have no idea. I mean, Leslie Frazier kind of came out of left field. I wasn't expecting that at all. Well, so hopefully we get a guy that's, that's young and innovative. Lord, Lord knows that won't happen. Lord knows there's only going to be like two or three names possible out of hundreds and hundreds. We had 28 coaches on our team last year, and yet there's only 10 people in the world that are qualified to be the new head coach of the San Francisco 49ers for some, some magical reason. I'll never understand. It, it's so, incredible. So, so we needed like we needed one coach for every two players, basically. That seems like I don't think we need like everyone to have their own personal coach. Seems like more coaches than you need. Well, Darius <laughs> needs five, four to read in the playbook, and one to like make sure that his weeds clear or something. I... <sighs> All right, and uh, as long as McDermott goes up there and, and has a plan, and I don't even care if he said if he goes up to, uh, there tomorrow and it's like. We are going into 2017 with Tyrod Taylor as our quarterback. I'm, I'm fine with it. If they have so conviction and they're they have a plan and they're this is what we're gonna do and we're gonna let's do it. I'm fucking I'm on board. Well, I'm on board. I'm just sick of this. I'm sick of this 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 like this divisiveness there is there. It seems so. That's what I want to see. All right. Well, we'll talk to you in the uh, what uh, August maybe. Oh, August. Alright, and pre-draft, pre-draft. Alright. Later. Okay, it's got a hope. All about my bills like Buffalo. That's about it from Manager's Corner. Go fuck yourself in the fuck with your show coming up next. We're going to the playoffs and you're going to take out one of our best players? Because you couldn't take a hit? That's a joke.
That's an absolute joke, is what it is. Shit, I'm all about the bills like Thurman Thomas.